This is Selma Schimmel at the Multidisciplinary Cancer Congress 2011 in Stockholm. I'm now pleased to be joined by Professor Dr. Frederick Amand, head of the scientific section of gynecologic oncology at the Catholic University in Leuven, Belgium. Hello, Professor Amand. I'm very excited to talk to you because I myself am a young adult breast cancer survivor. I've been diagnosed in my 20s. And your study really reflects how far we've come in our understanding about pregnancy and certainly taking chemotherapy during pregnancy and the impact that it does or does not have on children. So let's talk about your work. We were confronted about uh, in 2004 with one patient who actually came with us with cervical cancer and actually she was referred to us to terminate the pregnancy. And at that stage we learned, as you suggest, how little was known on cancer during pregnancy, on what proportion of chemotherapy goes to the fetus, um, wh what is the outcome of the children um, of mothers, because that was the one of the first worries if we talk about surgery, radiotherapy or chemotherapy to the pregnant mother. The first question was, okay, that's fine for me, but what about my baby? And we learned that actually little was known on the effects and also the long-term effects of, uh, on, of uh, children. Um, and that's why we initiated that study. Um, we, have now, we are now following more than 120 children, but here we report on 70 children that are at least 18 months old. And these children were um, actually not only investigated, but we, they, we asked mothers and the parents for the general health of these children. And then at uh, 18 months and predefined ages afterwards, they were invited for um, examinations to see their development, to see their intelligence, and to look into their attention, their memory functions. We looked into their heart. And um, overall, we think that the results are reassuring. Although we saw small differences, but these differences actually are mainly seen in preterm born children. So if a child receives chemotherapy during pregnancy and it is born at term, the results are normal, as in the normal general population. The subset of children who is likely to have problems are actually born preterm. So one of the main messages that we want to bring is that we think that chemotherapy during pregnancy as such is not a problem and probably prematurity is a much bigger problem. Is the prematurity possibly uh, induced by the chemotherapy? It might be, but we think that overall it's actually iotrogenic prematurity. That means that clinicians take a decision to deliver the mother in order to more easily treat the mother because there is some fear on the unknown effects of chemotherapy on the child. So I have a couple of questions. You were looking at cognitive function and cardiac issues in these children. So if a mother takes a, a drug that has cardiotoxicity, adriamycin, let's say, how much adriamycin is actually absorbed by the child and the child has absolutely no, none of those cardiac risks that the pregnant mom has? That's a very good question. We know from own research we've done that about 7% of doxorubicin, of adriamycin, is actually passing the placenta. So it's important to know that all the chemotherapy is not really passing to the fetus. There is a placental filter that actually makes sure that the fetus is to some extent protected. So that's one important issue. And secondly, we looked into these 70 children, into their cardiac functions, and at birth, there is no increase of congenital malformations and also the heart is, is normal. We looked into the heart rate, the blood pressure, we looked into the systolic and to the diastolic functions and they are all within normal limits. Well, it's pretty remarkable. Were you expecting to find something otherwise or as you initiated, what was your intuitive sense? What did you expect your study to reveal? Well, we might have expected that, for example, the myometer, the, the, the muscle thickness of the heart was a bit smaller because chemotherapy might interfere with, with growth. So that was one of the expectations that we had. 
Uh, but given the fact that actually only 7% of the maternal dosages are found within the fetus, so actually you could also expect that the heart function would be normal. But when we started the study, we didn't know that about 7%. We only know that due since last year, basically, when we published the, these data. And now we can better understand, of course, why the heart function is normal in our study. Uh, because the, the placenta is a f is filters the, the chemotherapy. So that explains a bit our results. And so if a woman takes a drug that also could affect her fertility, the likelihood that the fertility of that child being impacted is remote, probably too. Probably, yeah. There is There are some data from uh, another group who reported on that, on, on 12 mothers who, as a child, who themselves were exposed in utero to chemotherapy and they had reproductive, normal reproductive outcome. We have the children that we have that are, there are only five who, sh who are older than 12, they actually also have a normal reproductive function. But given the fact that the placenta is a filter, we actually, I do not expect that it will be a major problem. Would you advise pregnant women to have their children followed in any particular way uh, through their you know, growing years as a result of their own treatment? I think we would advise, we don't know what the long-term consequences are, and I think it, it's the uh, advice to follow them up um, on a regular basis uh, in order to make sure that fertility, that there's no other medical um, problems, secondary cancers, we, we actually don't know um, how this is. That's why we want to proceed to this, this research. And I'm impressed with the number of cancers that were included within your study. Tell us, please. I mean, it, it wasn't limited to breast cancer. No, it's uh, it's all actually we included all cancer cases. The only criterion was that they should have received chemotherapy, but they received chemotherapy for breast cancer, for hematologic malignancies, for ovarian cancer, for cervical cancer, for tongue cancer, brain tumor is in there. So actually, we see that pregnant women have all the cancers that are detected in women of reproductive age. Cancer, as such, is not leading to one type of cancer. We see that all the cancer types are also the of reprodu reproductive women are also diagnosed. Yes, I, I see you did the, uh, the hematologic and, these, and the solid tumors. So what are you going to do next? What's your uh, next area of research that you'll be pursuing? Well, this is actually an interim analysis. We are, this is not the end of the study. We want more children to be included and we want to motivate them to continue the follow-up because we have to ask a child who is normal we have to ask to come within three years back and to, we have to motivate these children so that we have the long-term follow-up and that we can, so that is really important. And when we have more children, we will be more able to differentiate between if a certain type of chemotherapy uh, has, has a result and the other kind not. We, we also want to look to the effects of radiotherapy because now it's, uh, the group is too small to make sub analyses basically. As I speak with you, it makes me think hmm, amazing that it took this long for someone to think about doing such a study. Well, we were also amazed in 2004 that at that, at that stage there were no data on that. And since then, actually, we are the only group that actually works on this. So even now, um, not many groups are working on this. And this is mainly because it's not easy. Um, it, it's, it's not so common that this occurs. You have to find your patients. And you have to really to look to all, you have to try to have a good network to identify all these patients and to motivate these patients to come. Now, you're based in, in, in Belgium. Is this study at this point limited to patients within your region? In order to deal with the low numbers, we started a collaboration with the Nijmegen in the Netherlands and Prague in, in Czech Republic. So it's mainly Belgium but also the same protocol is followed in the Netherlands and in Czech Republic in order to have more numbers. Thank you, Professor Frederick Aman, for spending time with us here at this multidisciplinary meeting in Stockholm. Thank you very much.